All right, how's everybody doing? It's your boy Jermaine from Shovel Nose Hogs back with another video. Appreciate all the new subscribers as well as the subscribers that are already following this channel, leaving comments, leaving likes. Uh, follow on my Instagram page, it's much, much appreciated. And for this video, um, it's gonna be another highlight of a morph. We're gonna be talking about the lavender morph. So um, it's gonna be pretty cool. It's gonna be just like my Sable presentation where I kind of go through what the gene is, what it looks like, as well as what are some potential combinations you can create when you combine them with other genes. And so um, kind of like any other genes with hog noses, um, there's a lot that hasn't been created, um, but I wanna give you all a presentation of what y'all can make if y'all are interested. Um, and before we get started with this presentation, I just wanna let y'all know that none of these pictures are mine. Um, I either got them from Morph Market or I got them from Facebook. And for this presentation, I tried to give credit to all the, to all the people that produced these snakes and took these pictures. Um, some of the pictures I don't have, the people that produced them, um, because I, I just couldn't find them. Uh, when I was setting up this presentation, but I don't want to take no credit for these pictures. Um, I'm just using them for educational purposes. So let's get on with the um, with the video. So like I said, we're going to be discussing the lavender gene. And so the lavender gene is a recessive gene and it gives a lavender color. So basically a purplish hog nose snake. And the cool thing about the lavender gene is it varies greatly. I've seen some that have like a light purplish, some are darker purple, some are even like a pinkish, some of them are even like a sky blue. Um, it's, it's very variable. And then you see some that are a little lower expression uh, to where they don't even really look lavender at all. But this is a recessive gene, so in order for the snake to have this lavender color, it needs one of the lavender genes from the mom as well as one of the lavender genes from the dad. If it only has one of the lavender genes, it's just going to be a carrier. It's going to look like a normal hog nose snake. So now let's get into um, combining this recessive lavender gene with an incomplete dominant gene. So we're going to be discussing the anaconda and the arctic gene. Those are the two incomplete dominant genes that we know of in hog nose snakes. So let's start off with the anaconda. And so for those of you all that don't know, um, the anaconda gene is basically a pattern reduction. So because it's an incomplete dominant, you only need one copy of the anaconda gene to have a pattern reduction. As you can see on the left hand side, the lavender conda. So basically a pattern reduction. So if you mix the lavender gene with two copies of the anaconda gene, you're going to get a full pattern reduction, which you'll see as the lavender superconda. So basically they just have the pattern on their head and the rest of their body is patternless. All right, so now let's get into the second incomplete dominant gene, which is the Arctic. And so the Arctic is kind of weird with the, with the, um, the lavender because some of the, the key characteristics of the Arctic, in my opinion, don't always pop up. So these two um, snakes right here were produced by the same person, uh, Jeff Gallwood or Gellwood. Um, he's from JMG Reptiles, probably the most popular hog nose breeder. And he's the one that discovered the Arctic gene. And as you can see, um, he has two different types of Arctic lavender uh, hog nose snakes. And the Arctic lavender is also known as the moon dust. As you can see on the left hand side, he has a pinkish uh, lavender arctic and then on the right hand side he has a purple arctic lavender and uh, the, both of these snakes currently are on sale on morphmarket.com they're like two thousand dollars a little bit more than that so they're pretty pricey animals but I really like um, the one on the right hand side the purple lavender arctic this is this right here the, the one on the right hand side the purple one actually displays a lot of the arctic characteristics as you can see the background is a reduced purple color and then you can see like the pattern is outlined in a darker purple um, so that's really the characteristics of the arctic gene so now just like with the anaconda the arctic is incomplete dominant so it only needs one copy of the arctic gene to express what the arctic looks like so if you have two copies of the arctic gene you get what's called a super arctic so in the next one, we're going to look at some super arctic lavenders, a.k.a. the moonstone. And so the first two pictures um, 
are made by Jeff as well. And so look at the look at the one on the left hand side. It's like a sky blue color hog nose, and then you can see like the jet black eyes. And that's really pretty. And then in the one in the middle, um, it's just like another color blue. And when I first saw this picture, I actually thought this was a super arctic lavender conda because as you can see, it looks like it has a reduced pattern. But on Facebook where I found a picture, at, it was just labeled as a super arctic lavender. So I don't know, maybe the lavender and the arctic gene influenced the pattern as well. I'm not 100% sure. And then on the right hand side, you see another version of the super arctic lavender and this right here to me the one on the right has the most characteristics of the super arctic as you can see the background is really white and then you can see that the pattern is outlined um and then it's just crazy look at the look at the variations i'm going to go back to the previous slide and i want you to see how different the, the colors are in these arctics so you see this pink animal and then this really purple animal and then when you get to the super arctics you get different shades of blue and then on the right hand side you get like this this purple with like a really white background so you have a lot of variation in terms of the lavender so now with the the incomplete dominant genes out of the way we're going to get into some um some more recessive genes that are mixed with the lavender and so the first one is going to be when you add the albino gene which is which is a recessive to the lavender so what you get it's a snake called a coral. So you get like a, a, a pink color hognose snakes, and this is almost like a salmon color. Um, this snake actually reminds me of my snake Cheeto, which is the sable anaconda when she's in shed. She gets this really salmony pink color, but this is basically how they look, man. It's a really cool morph, and I think it's, it's really popular. Um, I wasn't able to find the coral condas. Um, I'm pretty sure they've been produced. Um, and I definitely wasn't sure, I, I definitely wasn't able to find this, the coral superconders, but definitely, man, this is something that has untapped potential, the coral snake. So just imagine this snake with a reduced pattern, how that will look, and just imagine what it would look like without a pattern. So it'll probably look like a worm. All right. So uh, now let's go into uh, the next recessive gene. Uh, we're going to be mixing the, to the toffee belly with the lavender and so let's see what we get from that and so this picture right here i got this from facebook i didn't get the guy's name who produced this snake um but it was it was quite interesting this was the only lavender toffee combination i was able to find on the internet and you can see on the right hand side he has this labeled as a lavender in the middle is the lavender toffee combination and then on the right hand side is the, is the toffee belly um i'm kind of eh, iffy on this uh combination right here because if you look at that lavender on the right hand side it doesn't look like a lavender hog nose at all i don't see really any purples in it but it could be the lighting of the of the video of the of the picture i'm not 100 percent sure but if you look at the toffee lavender in the in the middle it kind of looks like a normal lavender um, but yeah this was pretty much the only picture that I found with the, the toffee lavender so this is definitely something that can be explored more and you'll probably have more variation in terms of what this combination will look like all right so now let's get into the next recessive gene combo and we're gonna add the exantic uh, recessive gene to the lavender and the exantic basically removes the reds and the oranges from the snake and you're left with like the black and the gray and the white and so when you mix that with the lavender you get what's called a mercury and a uh, shout out to beyond genetic genetics um, with this picture on the left hand side he actually has a picture of all three of the snakes so on the left hand side he has a lavender which his lavender is kind of on the pinkish side then in the middle, he has the exanthic, and then on the far right, he has what the toxic, I mean, the mercury is. So it's like a silverish snake. Um, it's like more of a reduced silver compared to the exanthic. And then on the right-hand side, OC reptiles, he has another um, example of what the mercury looks like. And so what happens when you add the mercury and you combine that with the, with the andaconda gene that reduces the pattern? And this is what you get right here, the mercury conda, also produced by OC Reptiles. Um, pretty cool looking snake, man. I really like that color. Um, it's really unique. So just imagine when you combine that with 
a super conda, Mercury super conda, you really get like a, a nice silver animal, kind of like a platinum animal. All right, so now let's get on to the next gene. And we have the caramel mixed with the lavender. And so this combination right here is actually new. It was just announced as a world's first, like maybe a month ago. Maybe it had been this month, early in July, I saw it on Facebook. And so this is what this combination looked like right here. And so the name of it, I can't really pronounce it. Um, the guy that um, first produced this, I have his name at the bottom. Um, he named this new morph or this new morph combination after his daughter. And as you can see, man, it does have a combination of the caramel gene and the, the lavender gene, man. It's almost like a perfect mixture. And I'll go back to the, the previous slide so you can see what a normal caramel and a normal lavender looks like. And then when you combine them, you get this pretty snake right here. So that's about it, man. That's, that's all the, the lavender condas, I mean, the lavender combos that I've been able to see on the internet so far. If y'all know of any more, y'all can leave them down in the comment section. Um, like I said, the hog nose snakes, man, there's so many morph combos that have not been done yet, man. And all these were just two recessive genes mixed together. So imagine lavender mixed with two other recessive genes, what that would look like in the future. So the future is good if you want to start off with hog nose snakes, if you think they're pretty, or if you want to get them as an investment animal. Um, if you like the video, leave a comment, subscribe. I really appreciate that, man. And uh, just stay on the lookout for my next videos. I got a lot more to come, and I'll see y'all again a little later, man. Peace out.